Introduction in Modeling Gas System with Simscape. This is something that happens in a library called uh, Simscape. We have low pressure supply of hydrogen, which has been then, thanks to the compressor, go up to 950 bar. And in these test cases, we are going to run in the model, we are going to do this in one hour. Then there is a chiller. Then when the time is right and the dispenser is activated, it's always keeping a very low temperature of the gas flowing into the vehicle. This is necessary to avoid a big temperature jump in the vehicle tank. The idea here is that after one hour, when we reach the right pressure, the vehicle, which is empty, has only 30 bar in the tank, uh, is going to be refueled to 700 bar. Uh, we're going to put six kilo. This is the requirement we have of hydrogen in our vehicle tank, and this should last less than five minutes. Did one shortcut to the model I want to discuss today, and this is the model uh, we're going to look together. It's a nitrogen gas refueling station. Uh, we have the low pressure supply, like in my architecture. We have a compressor inside a subsystem. Uh, you see this uh, pink line. We're going to discuss about it uh, later on, but this is the flow of hydrogen, which is physically connected between the different components. The heat exchanger before going the high pressure buffer storage. We have the chiller. We have the high pressure valve. We have a small pipe that goes to the dispenser, which is kind of the things attached to the vehicle, uh, delivering the hydrogen gas. And then we have the vehicle tank. And then we do some calculation, such as integrating from the initial mass, we integrate the vehicle tank so that we can have the total kilos. And uh, just to take a look at example on the compressor, let's go in it. We can see that in we have two possibility. These are called variant subsystem. I have an ideal compressor and a real compressor. And if I look in, in my ideal compressor, this is simply mass flow. Simply a mass flow. I can give any mass flow and it's going to keep this mass flow from port A to port B. And so there is real hydrogen flowing in. The same can be seen in the heat exchanger, where we actually have a model, the pipe, which is exchanging heat with the rest of the environment. And this is the real cool things about Simscape, how you get, so to speak, more color. And each color is associated with a new physical domain. And so you have the heat flow, taking heat out of the pipe and putting it into the ambient temperature. In this case, we are using an ideal heat exchanger. We're just giving power to take away uh, heat from the pipe. And we can then size and dimension uh, the necessary heat exchange that we need to make this storage work, this refueling station work. So we, I run the simulation now for 40,000 seconds. You can see down below that now what happens is that I define the uh, each component brings its own equation to the entire system. There is a compilation part in which the entire state space basically is calculated based on all the components attached to the physical network. And this is then inside inserted in our powerful solver and simulation engine, and then it's simulated. And then we are going to see that this model is actually exceptionally fast, of course, it's not very complex. And to repeat what we achieve, we want to do is we want to bring the first hour to fill up the compressor and then start the vehicle tanking process. So we can see here that it starts the simulation down below because from zero is already after one hour. And then there is a bit of uh, more slowness when we are charging the tank. There is a lot of physical things happening there during the tanking process. The simulation slows down a bit and then it stops and we get the result back. Such a simulation, like I did right now, can be quickly put together using ideal components, such as ideal compressor. This is not physics at all. It's just uh, we control the mass flow going into the system. We control the heat taken out of the system. And so it can be used to start sizing up our system, seeing if everything is all right without really going into the details of our physical domain. It can already be coupled with part of the software to see if our logic and whatever we achieve and we want to do, such as opening up the valve of the, it flows into the chiller, then after two seconds, opening up the dispenser to start the tank charging, refueling process. And then once the vehicle pressure is more than 700 bar, we can close it off. So you can really start combining software logic and a very high level physical model, but nevertheless, with time, you can increase the complexity of your model. Uh, I will do that when I switch to the real compressor so that we can compare the two simulation run. If I open up the data inspector, we can look at key performance. We wanted to see if the vehicle tank flow, we see that after 3,700, we go up to around 20 gram per second, which uh, compares to more or less 1.5 kilogram per minute, which is what expected on today's hydrogen fueling station. 
I have uh, I can measure if I meet my requirement of 300 seconds. I see that I thanks to this cursor I am at 303. So I'm almost there. Fulfill the requirement we can say, and we can fill up tank. But how much did we fill up? We can plot the total mass that's flowing in in our watts, and we see we start from 300 grams of hydrogen, and in the end we have six kilograms. So actually we reach six kilo around after 250 seconds. So this is fully complying with our high level requirement. We can really use this simulation to get all this all this KPI right. How much uh, should flow from the vehicle from the dispenser to the vehicle tank? We can as well clear uh, this plot and plot something like the high pressure pressure. So the compressor work, we see that we start from 30 bar and we bring it up to 950. After more or less 3,500 seconds, we are there. And down below, we can see maybe the temperature, the high pressure storage temperature. The gas, of course, heat up while it's being compressed. But we have an heat exchanger that can keep the temperature in checks around 60 degrees. And then we can take a quick look at the total power needed, for instance, to, to keep the gas after the chiller at minus 40 degree. This is very often done in this kind of refueling station. We have a chiller after the high pressure storage. We need to keep the, the gas at around minus 35, minus 40 degrees so that we don't have a big spike in temperature when we are bringing it into the tank. And we can see that here as well in the tank uh, temperature. There is a big spike, it comes to around 60 degrees, but this is not dangerous. This is full, full acceptable, so I, I did my tanking process in a safe way. Let me just quickly do one last simulation to showcase the difference with a real compressor. We can go inside the compressor to take a look at this new block. It's a positive displacement compressor and can easily be parameterized using uh, your data sheet of your machine, parameterizing their machines, and so you can refound the same things here. You can put kilogram per hour as a mass flow, what would be the nominal shaft speed, and what would be the nominal pressure ratio, and the volumetric efficiency. And these things can always be checked. There is very often a fluid where you can plot key characteristics of component. In this case, it's the volumetric efficiency versus the pressure of the compressor. Uh, so let's simulate with this block, quickly compare it, as we can see here already, this is one of the many blocks that combines two domains together. We have the pink one for the gas, and then we have the green one for the mechanical part. And so there are a lot of these multi-domain blocks within Simscape that allows you to build up truly this multi-domain simulation. I cancel all the subplots. Let's put just one. And the nice things about the data inspector is that I can always see my past simulation. So I have the, the mass flow of the compressor. In this case, the ideal one, we can see is just like I give a constant. And then we can take the real compressor mass flow. Let's put it in green. And we can see how uh, this respect truly uh, reacts to the different pressure differential that you have from port A and port B. Uh, it, this works around the nominal mass flow. And so we already have more precision in our system. But we see we can use the mass flow to size it up, and then we can put a real component to see how it all fits together in a more dynamic way. We try to put together for you the relevant Sinscape domain for hydrogen system modeling. They go from thermal exchange, like we saw the temperature, to mechanical, like we saw with the compressor, electrical, this for the fuel cell is going to be very important, thermal liquid for the electrolyzer with the water coming into the system, gas, two-phase fluid and moist air. These all come off the shelf as a shipping library. 